would love to introduce the man of the hour, Mr. Mike Grimm, um, because he is the author of this. Um, and just a heads up, this is, there we go, there's, there's Mike. Um, so real quick, Mike, before we get going, I would love it if you could just give us um, just a little overview of like what you're hoping people get out of this, you know, this screenplay, why you wrote it, um, what you're hoping people get from it. Um, and maybe just, you know, shout out to your parents because I'm sure you want to do that. <laughs> All right, I'd be I'd probably be grounded if I didn't do that. Um, Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I, I know it's all around the world. Um, people are tuning in, which is super cool. Thank you. I saw someone at like 2 a.m. where they're at. Um, so very blessed to have you here. Uh, like uh, Denise said, my name is Mike Grimm. I wrote this uh, screenplay kind of at a time when I was having a little bit of a uh, crisis of faith myself. I'd just gone through a uh, tough breakup and I was asking myself the question that the, the title of the screenplay poses is, are, are, you know, are you up there, God? Are you listening? And so this script was a very cathartic thing for me because um, as I was writing it, it helped me uh, grow my faith and to answer some of the questions that I was asking myself. Um, so as you're uh, as you're listening to this, it, again, it's a true honor. So thank you, GK Chesterton Entertainment. This is amazing for me to hear. And hopefully there's a lot more. Yay, that was a good line as opposed to the other way. But this is going to help me uh, with the rewrite a lot. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I just hope you, you think about... Um, how God might be working in your life in smaller or big ways um, after after hearing this, because that's one thing that I, I think uh, I really wanted to explore. So anyways, thank you so much for coming and looking forward to, to hearing this out loud. Thanks, Mike. Um, we're going to have a blast. Um, Mike was a, um, I'll see you on the other side. Um, Mike was a member of the writers group, uh, still is a member of the writers group. So I've been fortunate to hear this script a few times um, and I know you guys are gonna love it. It's pretty funny, especially if you guys like, is it John Hughes movies? I don't know the name of that director that so inspires you so much, but um, anyway, it's cute, it's fun. And without further ado, let's get into it. So um, actors who are in, who are starting off, um, feel free to turn your uh, video and audio on. Kaiser, I'm basically thinking of you. Kaiser is our trusty man on stage directions. Um, he's the first one on, so he gets the intro. Uh, but I will leave it up to, um, uh, but I will leave it up to all the actors to take over now and you won't see me again until the end. So everybody have a great time and please enjoy You Up There. You Up There. Written by Michael J. Grimm. Interior Church Day. The congregation is singing a hymn. We focus in on a young member of the parish, little James, male, five years old. His eyes full of wonder as he gazes upward. I'm pretty sure the first time I saw God was when I was about five years old. Cute little me staring at the wall of this church, seeing this crazy, beautiful spectrum of color. Little James is enamored by the kaleidoscope of colors on the wall. There I was, looking at that shimmering light, thinking, man, well, that must be God. The spectrum is coming from the stained glass window across the way, but to little James, this is God. My parents never forced the idea of God on me. I mean, they dressed me up as saints for Halloween, but times were tight, and saint costumes are cheap to make. Quick snapshots of James as St. Francis of Assisi, St. Maximilian Kolbe, St. JP2, etc. However to let me make my own decision about believing in the big man. And God's been good to me, no doubt. Great family, athletic bod, cat-like reflexes, smarts, the whole deal. Exterior playground day, 10-year-old James is deciding which dandelion to pick out of a field of dandelions. He picks one, satisfied. Everywhere in life, really, except one category. 10-year-old James holds the dandelion up to Lizzie McKee, female 10. He gazes at her, definitely in love. Lizzie, will you marry me? Lizzie looks at him funny, bends over, picks up some mud, and throws it at 10-year-old James' chest. She runs away with her friends, all of them laughing. 10-year-old James looks at his dandelion forlornly with a fresh mud stain plastered on his shirt. Ouch. Even had my cootie shot. What started as a mud stain from Lizzie McGee at the age of 10 continued on to high school, the time when the opposite sex actually started to matter. Going to an all-boys Catholic school made talking to any girls who weren't nuns especially difficult. So every year at the fall formal with our sister school. Interior cafeteria night. Superimposed freshman year. Freshman James braces, stands in the corner, rocking back and forth on his toes. He looks across the way. They're all, there are all of the potential dance partners. Nope, he'll stay put. Split screen. Superimposed sophomore year. 
Sophomore James braces gone, takes up half the screen. Sophomore James, just as awkward, tries to lean up against the wall, but misses and stumbles. Superimposed junior year. A third frame barges in with Junior James, chatting with friends. Junior James make, makes eye contact with a girl. She waves. James waves back, but then another guy brushes by James to meet her. She was waving at the guy behind him. James awkwardly lowers his arm to scratch his head as a cover. Why did I hang on the sidelines, you ask? I mean, it just never felt like something or, or, or someone was missing. My buds were enough. I mean, my mom says I'm handsome. My Nana calls me a catch. Aunt Judy once said, and I quote, that I am the total package. Quick snapshots of photos. James in his baseball uniform. James getting money at some student council fundraising event. James flexing for the camera. Starting shortstop for, base, for varsity baseball. Active member of student council. Can bench my body weight eight times. Smash to interior weight room day. James struggling to get the bar up. He calls for help. Okay. Uh, six and a half times, but despite my resume, for whatever reason, the ladies aren't loving it. So don't go tweeting about this or anything, but at age 18, I, James Frederick, have never been on an official date. <laughs> Basically, despite a 318 batting average junior year, I, I haven't even reached first base with the ladies yet. Interior James' room evening. James kneels next to his bed, his hands clasped in prayer. His room is filled with Philadelphia Eagles paraphernalia, movie posters, etc. I prayed that once, just once, God would put someone in my path for just one date. <laughs> That'd be cool. I mean, you know, I take her somewhere real fancy, like like Olive Garden or something. You know, unlimited breadsticks. That's what's up. Anyway. Uh, they say if you pray with the right heart, your prayers will be answered. What I didn't realize is that at the fall formal of my senior year, God would finally answer my prayers. Well, sort of. You'll see. Opening titles, you up there. Next year, James House morning. A young man in a Catholic school uniform walks to an old Nissan that looks like it is on its last leg. It is, in fact, it definitely is. Into your Liam Nissan morning. The slam of the car door as our hero, James Fredericks, male 18, plops down in the driver's seat. James is an approachable young man. One may think he is too cool for school upon first glance, but he has an impeccable attendance record, so that wouldn't be the case. Sup, St. Chris? Close on the St. Christopher medal, which is pinned to the top of the sunshade. James, put, James puts the key in the ignition, turns the key. The car wheezes, doesn't start. James looks up. God, come on, just give me one start. Give Liam Neeson one more start. Closes his eyes, says a little silent prayer. The music swells. This is how God works, right? Deep breath. James turns the key and sputter. A pop. James sighs. Exterior car continuous. Black smoke pours out of the back of a car that should have been in the junkyard a few years ago. James gets out of his car with dismay. After a beat, he looks over at a bicycle leaned up against the garage. Fine, I'll burn off that extra ego. Smash to exterior middle-class neighborhood moments later. A soaked James pedals his bike down the road, still a wry smile on his face. It's pouring rain. He pedals past the exterior Catholic school, establishing. An older building with a large white cross on top. A marquee out front reads, fall formal tonight. We see James park his bike and hustle inside, drenched. Interior, Father Jacob's classroom, day. Father Jacobs, male, early 40s, is at the front of the classroom holding a copy of the Bible. A room full of boys are at attention, their Bibles out on their desks. Gentlemen, before we dig into scripture, given tonight's big event, let me remind you uh, about what the good Lord has to say about courtship. He wants us to get some action, right, Father? <laughs> the class laughs. Father Jacobs shoots him a look, but can't help but smirk. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for shouting out and giving me a great segue into an oft-forgotten fruit of the Holy Spirit, self-control. On cue, the classroom door opens. It's James. He drips water onto the floor. Mr. Fredericks, thanks for bringing the storm in with you. James holds up his Bible and smiles. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Technically, Father, I'm totally covered in the Holy Spirit right now. It's all up in here. <laughs> the class laughs. He's a fan favorite. 
Papa squat. James squishes his way over to his seat. James fist bumps two guys on his way over. Joe Schmidt, male 18, reserved with a polite comb over. And Sam O'Leary, male 18, outspoken and blunt. Think of these two as the angel and devil on James' shoulders. James, somewhere in the middle. So what exactly do I mean by self-control? Hmm? Well, put simply, if you wouldn't do it in front of your grandma, don't do it on the dance floor. <laughs> You'd be surprised about the things I do in front of my grandma, father. <laughs> and I look forward to hearing about those things in the confessional, Samuel. Interior so. cafeteria day. Joe, Sam, and James sit together in the cafeteria. Liam Neeson lived the good life. Shared many miles together, guys. But how are you going to pick up your date for the spring formal tonight? <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. You don't have one. <laughs> I'm keeping my options open, Sam. Going stag is what's in nowadays. I read it in a BuzzFeed article. Cool. You'll have gone four years here just watching me mack and some Catholic babes and Joe doing, well, whatever he does with Claire. <laughs> we don't do anything, Sam. We're saving that for the sanctity of marriage. Sanctity of marriage? Joseph, we got to be well prepared for the next year so we don't embarrass ourselves in front of these college chicks. Anyway, James, I respect your decision to remain chaste. But listen, you guys know how I'm just biding my time, waiting for the right one. Okay, Jim, you've been saying that since freshman year. Why not ask Lizzie McKee? Didn't she like, like your Instagram post the other day? Lizzie? No, 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 we don't, we don't talk about Lizzie. <laughs> Joe, you're, you're, you're talking to Claire, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Last weekend, she liked my status of update about the Ascension of Mary. You could say things are getting pretty serious. You did a status update on the Ascension of Mary? Joe nods proudly, and Sam pats his hand on Joe's shoulder. You're totally ending up in seminary. <laughs> if that's my vocation, cool. Let's be easy on Joe. Our Overwatch squad would be nothing without him, seminary or not. Sam shrugs in agreement. Listen, I don't get it, James. You got everything those girls over at St. Mary's are looking for. Tall, dark, holy? Seriously, you're holier than the Steelers' offensive line on Sundays. I sent JC a prayer. It's got my back. We're good. JC ain't, ain't going to win for you, bro. Sam's got a point for once. But guys, chill. Like I... I got this. Exterior James' house evening. The sun is setting on a small Cape Cod with an acre or so. The voice of Mary, James' mother. Turn just a little bit to the left. No, your other left. Interior James' house continuous. James tries to keep a patient face as he turns his body. We meet his mother Mary, female 45, who is snapping away photos. Uh, how many photos does this iPhone hold? Snap, snap. Not enough. Wow, just so handsome. Right, dear? Walking in is Christopher, male 46, James' father. Whoa, blessed with his mother's looks. He plants one on Mary's lips. Guys, please, gr gross. Ugh. All right, Ma, now get one with my dates. Not bad, right? Legs for days. James puts his arm around his invisible date. Mary shoots him a look of disapproval. Stop that. You're young, James. You just got to be patient. Yeah, whatever. Mary types into her phone. You're going to be an Instagram star. Hannah and Bill's daughters are going to think you're so dreamy. They're juniors this year. Thanks for the marketing, Ma. Ready to go, champ? Is this show full? Is that the ready? <laughs> yeah, just let me grab my wallet. Interior James room moments later. James grabs his wallet from the table. Above his desk is a crucifix. James is about to leave, but he stops in front of the crucifix, kneels down. Dear Lord. Hey, <laughs> me, James, your creation. Sorry, that, that came out really weird. Um, but thanks for the whole creating me part. Um, <laughs> anyway, you know the deal by now. I trust you. Don't get me wrong, but... It, if you have a young lady you'd like me to meet, I, I don't care if you hit me over the head with her. Please, just put her in my path, all right? Can you hook me up just this once? James stares at JC, hoping for confirmation. Silence. 
into your ear Christopher's car moments later. James is sitting shotgun, his father driving him to the formal. James thinks for a moment. Hey, Dad, uh, I know you met Ma while in line for confession, but like, how did you do it? How'd you approach her for the first time? Chris chuckles aloud. <laughs> well, son, uh, your mother was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. I remember standing there doing an examen and, and shooting a line to God. Please, Lord, give me the strength to talk to the most beautiful woman in the world standing in front of me right now. Yeah. So I went up and asked her, come here often. Oh, that's just awful. <laughs> hey, I asked the Lord to grant me the courage to talk to your mother, not to nail the opening line. Luckily, your mother is a wonderful lady and gave me a second chance over lunch. I, obviously, it worked. Exhibit you. Gotcha. A beat. Chris clocks James' concern. Listen, son. You only need three things in life to know everything will work out. Ice cream, Eagles football, and... Christopher smiles. <laughs> Close. Um, keep the faith. Have hope. And always, always look for opportunities to love. Wow, oh, Dad. Your fatherly advice game is really on point. <laughs> but yes, sensei. Interior cafeteria later. It's the Midnight in Paris theme. There's some intermingling between the girls' school and the boys' school, but mostly lines have been drawn. Not much dancing is going on. Joe and Sam are there with James, who is chilling, drinking some fruit, fruit punch. He's scanning the scene. High school dances suck. We are gonna see some of those vintage white boy dance moves tonight, James? Well, we'll see what the night brings, but likely gotta give the people what they want. Got your eye on any ladies? There's potential. So, no. James, what's the worst thing a girl could say to you if you asked her to dance? Uh, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I like to wear Uggs. I was going to say no, but yeah, both of those things are definitely worse. The twist by Chubby Checker Place. Sam and Joe look at two girls who wave them over to the middle of the dance floor. Uh-oh, stand your ground, Joe. The girls roll their eyes and run over to Sam and Joe. They will be dancing, whether they like it or not. The girls drag the guys to the dance floor. Come on, Jane. Come on. Joe and Sam begrudgingly start to do the vintage twist dance with their dates. James smirks and, oh, what the heck, runs out as well, really getting into it. After a few seconds of dancing, a young lady next to James is doing a water sprinkler dance move of her own. She accidentally whacks James right in the head with her moving arm. James looks over and sees. It's like a beacon of light is shining down on Alexis Calloway, female 18. She beams with confidence and has a smile that could light up the world. Somewhere, How Do You Talk to an Angel by, by The Heights plays. James is immediately smitten. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh, my water sprinkler totally got out of control there. Um, I'll have to talk to maintenance about that. <laughs> and James just stares, words not coming out of his mouth. She's stunning and willing to save James from his awkward silence. I'm Alexis. Lexi, if three syllables aren't your thing. James, <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully one syllable is your thing. Oh, sorry. I'm a seven or more syllable kind of girl, mostly into Hawaiians. <laughs> and that's it. She renders him speechless, which is unfortunate because this is his major opportunity. It's too long of a beat for her to be comfortable. Okay. Cool. Enjoy your night, man. And she dances away with, with friends. People twist around James, but Lexi is the only person in the world he sees. Hit me over the head with her. James smiles. That's his sign. Interior cafeteria later. James gazes across the cafeteria. There is Lexi talking to friends. James, you're staring. She's not a piece of meat. I stare at bacon when it's cooking. <laughs> Joe shoots him a look. That's her. She's the one. Joe and Sam share a look of perplexity, but it sure does appear like James is having a case of love at first sight. What's her name? I forgot. Oh, good. But, but, but I prayed and God gave me the sign I asked him for, like, like literally. 
A slow song, Photograph, by Ed Sheeran begins to play. Now the young men and young women are starting to intermingle. So James, if she's the one, don't you think you should ask her to dance? This hits James. He's got to make a move. Now or never. Go get him, champ. Leave him for Jesus. Joe spread his hands apart, i.e. the recommended distance between the dancing couple. James takes a deep breath a step forward, then turns around. Nope, can't do it. Sam pushes him forward. This time, James takes multiple steps. He's on a mission. He approaches Lexi. She looks at him and smiles. So, uh, Ed Sheeran, he's got the voice of an angel. Glorious ginger angel. I agree. I saw him in concert last year. You're the guy I whacked in the head earlier, right? Yeah, uh, James. That's right. You know, you've got a hard noggin. Do you know that? Thanks. Um, it's it's bone mostly. So um, he looks left and right, stalling for a beat that goes on too long. All right, Jim. Here's the deal. We're about forty seconds into a three and a half minute song. If you came over here just for some chit chat, let's save it for a different song instead of one where someone might actually ask me to dance. Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, I was getting around to it. <laughs> May I have this dance? May I have this? What century are we in? <laughs> sure, I'll dance. Sure, okay, let's just... Uh... And they make their way over to the dance floor. James stands across from Alexis, assuming the high school slow dance position, for being a cool guy, there's a sense that James needs work in this area. James looks at his two buds. Joe has his hands spread apart still, reminding James of the recommended distance. Sam gestures for James to put his hands lower. Sam and Joe look at each other with matching looks of disapproval. James focuses back to Alexis. Okay, uh, I forgot your name. It's cool. I'm sure it's from the minor concussion I gave you earlier. I'm Alexis. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Uh, like the saint. Saint Alexis was actually a man. Oh, so I'm named after a dude? Not just a dude, uh, a saint. Saint Alexis was given a rich bride by his parents, but on his wedding day, he left her for God and served the poor for years. And get this, he returned home 17 years later and his own parents didn't recognize the beggar in front of them, but it was their son. So I'm named after a dude that ditched his bride at the altar. Cool. I mean, when you put it that way. I'm... Do you start every conversation with a girl by giving her a detailed history of an obscure saint who she's named after? Uh, not every girl. Might explain why you're single. Just saying. Ouch. Who's to say I'm single? I mean, yeah, yes, to the single part, not to the saint thing. <laughs> but based on your obscure saint knowledge, I'm thinking you must be a 10. A 10? Wow, well, <laughs> I'd I, I give myself like an eight, 8.2 tops. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like on the Catholic scale, from one to 10, you're a 10. There's a Catholic scale? I mean, wouldn't Jesus be a 10? Maybe I'm like a eight something doesn't really seem to resonate with alexis but she is polite and smiles however there is a noticeable hint of disappointment in her expression james decides to turn it around how do you like it at saint mary's it's okay looking forward to graduation ah, and uh who's your favorite saint okay all right jim let me uh give you some advice for the next girl that comes around looking for a dance just ease up on the saint talk but in case you were wondering, favorite saint is Drew Brees. Thanks for the dance. And she breaks it off, walking back to the other side of the cafeteria even before the song is over. James' heart just broke a little bit. He's not really sure what just happened. He walks over to Sam and Joe, a blank look on his face. It went poorly. Be easy. What happened, man? I, I need some fresh air. James leaves. From afar, we see Alexis watch James walk out. She has a sly smile on her face. 
Exterior Catholic school night. James stands outside by himself, getting some fresh air. He looks up at the clear sky, shakes his head, clearly disappointed. Saints? Come on, James. Are you messing with me or something? I mean, she hit me on the head like I asked. Hey, Jim. You're out here talking to yourself and it's making me question your sanity a bit. Again, likely the concussion. Oh, no, I was just, uh, you know. You want to ditch this place and do some real dancing? On James, confused. Wait, but, uh, but you just... She grabs his hand and pulls him away. Interior Alexis's car, moments later. Alexis smiles as she drives down the road. So, um, quick recap. You just ditched me on the dance floor. I didn't even hit the bridge yet. And now I am here in your car. It was getting stuffy in there. Plus, the DJ played four Pitbull songs in the first hour. It's a little much, wasn't it? <laughs> but, Jim, as far as you go, despite a flaw or three, you've got a special aura about you. I like you. <laughs> really? Well, I, I like you too. Uh, but, but I mean, I, I've only known you for about 12 minutes, so I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I mean, you could be some crazy psychopath who chops me to, uh... okay, nope, stop in there. Alexis laughs. <laughs> Such a wordsmith. Be easy on yourself, man. You're making it sound like I'm the first girl you've ever talked to. Uh, well, you know, going to an old boys Catholic school, nuns don't care much for my pickup lines. You have pickup lines for nuns? That may explain why you're single. <clears throat> hey, girl. Is it hot in here? Or is it just the Holy Spirit burning inside of you? Oh, and <laughs> he actually has one. Wow. Careful, lines like that are going to pull some sisters out of the convent. <laughs> James shrugs. Where are we going, anyway? Alexis grins. Interior, Hummel's Country Barn, moments later. A live country band plays with gusto on the main stage. A banjo, violin, bass, percussion, the whole bit. It's a good old-fashioned hoedown. Dance partners spin and twirl, two-step and heel click. Young and old are getting down. James takes in the scene. Now this, Jimbo, is a dance. Ah, uh -huh. cool. I'll watch. Oh, no, you don't. I want to see your moves. I can't, I can't hang here. You, look at the guy over there. He points at an experienced two-step dancer. The dancer whips his partner around at lightning speed and then masterfully does some toe clicks. Well, he, he just did like 14 spins. The experienced <laughs> dancer moves to the middle of the circle and continues to impress with his assortment of country dance moves, hoots and hollers from the peanut gallery. The lead singer on the stage grabs the mic. All right, everybody, grab your partner. It's time for a little Texas two-step. And before James can react, Alexis grabs his hand and pulls him on the dance floor. I'm not from Texas. Let the music move you, partner. That's the problem. But the music has started and it's too late to turn back now. They start swaying back and forth with the beat, at first awkwardly, then with a little bit more rhythm and connection. Swing your partner round and round. Alexis spins James twice. She's the only female that spins the male. All the other couples, it was the guy who spun the female. Wait, I, I was supposed to spin you. Breaking gender norms, baby! She smiles wide at James. He returns it. There is undeniable chemistry there. Time to switch it up. Find a new partner. Alexis lets go of James with a wave and a wink, and she falls into another male partner. James looks over at his new partner. It's an elderly lady at at least 70. James shrugs and goes for it. The elderly lady is all business. She's basically leading James. They break for a minute, and the old lady does a little solo dance for James. She then points at James to do his own thing. He does a sloppy two-step, but does it with enthusiasm. He points back at the old lady who feeds off James' young energy. Alexis looks over, loving James' spirit despite the complete lack of skill. Before James realizes it, a circle is formed around him and the elderly lady, young and old. The congregation claps with the beat. The experienced dancer from earlier, never willing to give up the spotlight, goes to the middle of the circle. All of a sudden, James is in the middle of a dance-off. James looks over at Alexis with panic. She smiles genuinely and gives him a thumbs up. Time seems to slow down when he sees her. It's perfect. The experienced dancer puffs out his chest and does some trained moves. They're really good, but nothing out of the ordinary within the genre. The elderly lady is impressed. It's James' turn. With his back firmly against the wall, he has to go with what he knows best. 
white boy dance moves. First, the tornado, which evolves into double pistols, which then James pretends to hold a lasso. He lassos the elderly lady and draws her in. The experienced dancer moves between the two, cutting the rope. He spins the elderly lady around and dips her. More hoots and hollers. James moonwalks over to the elderly lady, snatching the experienced dancer's cowboy hat in the process. The elderly lady fake faints into James' arms. James takes the experienced dancer's cowboy hat and covers it over he and the elderly lady's face as he dips her, hiding their kiss. The crowd goes wild. The experienced dancer has been bested. James won the crowd over. The elderly lady fans herself. Woo-wee! Now that was a good old-fashioned dance-off. Let's slow down for the next one. The elderly lady taps James on the shoulder. Young man, you had me feeling like I was 18 again. Thank you. Don't keep that young lady over there waiting, especially with the way that she looks at you. Wait, what? What look? The elderly lady winks at James. James looks over at Alexis, who has taken her hands, who has her hands behind her back, swaying back and forth. James takes her in as he walks towards her. So, it's not Ed Sheeran, but... Fine, let's dance. James and Alexis have been here before, but it seems far more natural this time. I think you've got a new rival. James looks over at the experienced dancer, who glares at James. James nods and smiles. And potentially a girlfriend? James shifts his attention to the elderly lady, who smiles wide at James. Could be right. She's spry for her age. wonder if she's into (laughs) younger guys. See? It's a good crowd here. Thanks for joining me. I mean, you kind of kidnapped me from the dance. I could call the cops. You always have the right things to say, Jim. (laughs) Sorry. No, it's okay. It's super endearing. She puts her head on his shoulder as they sway back and forth. James smiles wide. The perfect first date. James looks upward and mouths, thank you, to the man upstairs. God came through. However, from the other side, we see Alexis' smile slowly fade to a much more somber expression. She is content, but something isn't quite right. Interior, Alexis' car later. Alexis drives, looks down at her phone. Her background image is a pair of small hands holding a firefly. James notices it. It's late. Hope you won't get in trouble for breaking curfew. I also choose to live dangerously. Got a thing for lightning bugs? She shuts off her phone. Surprised that he saw it. Um, yeah. I like fireflies. Random. But cool. I mean, I mean, who wouldn't want a light on their butt? Alexis nods. True. James points ahead. This is my place up here. James takes a deep breath. He's never been here before with a girl. So, uh, Alexis, tonight was amazing. You get that line from The Bachelor? Um, Do you want to, like, you know, go out sometime? Like Olive Garden or something? Alexis smiles, but it's a bit forced. Tonight was a lot of fun, James. I needed it. And I love the OG. But uh, no, thank you. Okay, cool. So uh... James recalibrates, making sure he heard right. And in one quick moment, James' world comes crashing down. Wait, but uh, no? Alexis sighs. I should explain Um, you know the term deal breaker, right? I, um... You're a really good guy. That's your deal breaker? No, (laughs) no, that's a great thing. I don't get it. I mean, I thought we... I guess, um, it's more that you're a god guy. I mean, you and your god seem pretty tight. What do you mean? My God, I mean, he's yours too. I mean, he doesn't play favorites, you know? Yeah. James can't get a read on her. Where are you on this Catholic scale you mentioned? Alexis sighs. A goose egg? She makes a zero with her fingers. A circle? Like? infinity (laughs) no 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 james that's a zero 
Not a no, zilch. I'm a zero because I don't believe in God. What? You, you go to Catholic school. Well, just because you live in Pittsburgh doesn't mean you have to root for the Steelers. Sorry. But, but why? Does it matter? <laughs> I thought Christians were supposed to be accepting of everyone. Love thy neighbor, that whole bit. No, I just, I, I mean, I figured since you went to St. Mary's and all, I, you really don't believe in God? Not one bit. James runs his hand through his hair. You see what I mean? This is why I didn't want to even say anything, but I mean, tonight ended up being, well, you know, so I feel like I owe you the truth, but that's also why we, you and I, um, is just tonight. Why did you take me to the barn if you knew that the God thing was a deal breaker? James, I just, um, I needed a break from the, my usual guy, something about you, you were different. And I didn't know that you or that we, um, it was completely selfish. I'm sorry. James is in a state of complete shock. Jim, one day you're going to make some super lucky girl amazingly happy though. That's for sure. Who says we can't be together? A Catholic and an atheist? I mean, there's no law against that. Trust me on this one, man. It was really nice to meet you. She puts her hand out for a shake. James stares at it, not returning the shake. After a beat, James leaves the car in silence. Alexis stares straight ahead, emotionless. I'm sorry. She stares there for a beat, then starts to drive away. But a thump as James is hit by the side view mirror. Alexis screeches, then breaks. Tim, are you crazy? James composes himself and runs up to the driver's side. No. You know what? That, that's crap. The whole God deal breaker thing? I mean, we, we, we can still be a, a, a thing. So you're going to join me in the atheist life? James, please, give it up. So what if, what if, what if I can prove to you that God exists? That he's real. Would you go on a date with me then? Well, Alexis can't help but soften at his enthusiasm. She thinks and shakes her head. Jim, you're being crazy. I can do it. I can prove to you that he is up there. Alexis <laughs> chuckles and sighs in exasperation. Do you even realize how ridiculous you sound? Jim, you can't be serious. James' look is one of peak seriousness. I'm a billion percent serious. This is me. So that's a yes to a date then? Once I do it. Once I prove to you that God exists. Alexis lets out an exasperated sigh. You are persistent, aren't you? James smiles wide and nods. You know what, Jim? You're not going to change my mind. But if you could do that, the whole God bit. Sure. I'd go on a date with you, but just one. Alexis says this fully knowing he can't actually do it. James looks at her, deep into her eyes. He holds out her hand for a shake. Alexis eyes it, then meets it. You have a deal. This Saturday, I'll pick you up for lunch, and then we'll do it. I'll show you God. And then we're going to go on a date and eat all the breadsticks, and you're going to love it. Alexis lets out an exasperated sigh. Gosh, Jim, you're something. See you Saturday. James smiles and Alexis drives off. But then James' smile slowly fades as reality sets in. Interior, Father Jacob's classroom, day. Father Jacob stares at James. Father's eyebrow is raised. It's for a girl. Oh, good heavens. Is this what young love is nowadays? Well, James, if she's looking to see God and shake his hand, she's not going to have any luck. God is reasonable, but not scientific. 
hospital, but you didn't meet this girl, Father. She's totally awesome, funny, smart, spontaneous. I, I have to get a day with her. By proving God's existence? James gives a beleaguered look as the weight of what he must do settles in. I know why you became a priest. Girls just make life difficult. Father Jacobs laughs. <laughs> I can assure you, my friend, that um, that was not the reason for my calling. Well, but how do I do it, Father? Well, as a man of God, you are one of his disciples, no? Yes. <laughs> Father, Father Jacobs opens his desk drawer and pulls out a Bible. And everything you need to prove God's existence is here. James squints his eyes as if that's not enough, waiting for more, but nothing. What? That's it? No, no verse, a chapter, inspirational monologue, <laughs> anything? Father Jacob pats the Bible again and smiles. You are a terrible teacher. Father Jacobs thinks for a beat. Fine. Here's one. We live by faith, not by sight. James still has a blank look, but it's the best he'll get for now. Interior cafeteria day. James is with Sam and Joe. So, did you make out at least? Nope. So she steals you from one dance, brings you to this hoedown thing, a second dance, and no makeout sesh? Correct. Oh, and she rejected me when I asked her out. Sam <sighs> throws his arms in the air. What? Then why are we even talking about her right now? Because she'll go on a date with me if I can prove to her that God exists. Sam and Joe share a look, then laugh out loud. <laughs> After the laughing <laughs> dies down, they can see James isn't kidding. Oh, <clears throat> um, you're serious. Uh what? She's an uh, atheist, but I can change that. Okay, um, I'm with Sam. You got to let this one go. Look, I prayed to God for a sign. He gave it to me at the dance. We had an, an undeniable connection. Undeniable connection? What are you, The Bachelor? Apparently, I should be on that show. Joe thinks then. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. I see what James is doing here. He's evangel dating. I appreciate the hustle. Sam thinks for a second, then gets a sly smile. James, this girl is clearly playing you. So, we got to play her back. Let's have a little fun. We help you prove to her that God is real. You know, stage an act of God. When you're with her Saturday, plan it all out ahead of time. That is an awful idea. She'd see right through that. I agree. How else is she going to do it? I, I don't know. Well, just know me and Joe have got your back. Okay, put us on speed dial if you ever need an uh, intervention. I will not be involved. He will. You need a date, man. Into your James room later. James is sitting at his desk. There in front of him is the Bible. Cracks his knuckles. Okay. Answers, please. He looks at the crucifix as if it'll have an answer. It doesn't. He opens up to a random page and plants his finger down. Bible roulette. Begin montage. James takes a piece of paper, writes Alexis and God at the top of it. James highlights the Bible, reading vigorously. He flips through with ardor. James scribbles on a piece of paper. First stop, he keeps writing. Hospital? Question mark. Crosses it out. Writes, where would Jesus grab lunch? Panera bread and winery? Taps his pencil, unsure. Writes, aquarium? Museum? Church? Taps his pencil. Stuck on that one. James taking a break by playing some Overwatch. James passed out on his Bible. Empty can or two of energy drink. Next to him is a sheet of paper filled with ideas. Stumbles awake. Quick cuts of various Google searches. How to prove God is real. Signs a girl is into you. Questions to ask a girl on a first date when she doesn't think it's a date. Bible verses to save a relationship. James takes out an old yearbook. He scans through and taps on a picture of a young girl. If you're observant, you know this is Lizzie, the girl who threw mud at James' chest from his opening monologue. Circles it. 
James has his iPhone out. He's Googling maps, creating an itinerary. Prints out a few maps. He looks at his filled agenda. We don't see the agenda, but James looks satisfied enough. End montage. Interior James' room, morning. James is up, ready to go. He passes the crucifix. I need you today, JC. Like, big time, man. He fist bumps the crucifix. It falls off the wall. Easy on the fist bumps. Got it. He puts Jesus back in the wall and exits. Interior, James' house, day. Christopher is at the breakfast nook with Mary. James walks in a little sleepy, but mostly determined. Hey, change Liam's oil yesterday, son. Should be back in running order for well, a few more miles at least. Awesome. Thanks. Well, you're all gelled up. Do I smell cologne? You know, just my natural scent. Smell of a man, Ma. She rolls her eyes. Christopher knows something is up. Where are you going today, son? Prove that God exists. Get the girl. Later. And with that, James is out the front door. Christopher raises his brow and then smiles at Mary. That's my boy. Interior, Liam Nissan, morning. A nice sunny day outside. James has his keys in the ignition, takes a pause, closes his eyes, whispers a silent prayer. The music swells. This is how prayer works, right? Turns the keys. After a wheeze, Liam Neeson starts. James smiles. This is going to be his day. In exterior, Alexis's house, morning. Liam Neeson arrives outside of Alexis's house. She's out front on her phone. Sees James ride. James has his window down, arm out, sunglasses on. You coming, lady? Didn't know we'd be riding in style. Meet Liam Neeson. He will find you and he will drive you. I get a whole day of this? Yes! Interior Liam Nissan moments later. James sits next to Alexis. So, where are we heading? Heaven is north, right? <laughs> oh, it's a surprise. A beat. Perhaps we should establish some ground rules. Keep sweet nothings to a minimum? James, I'm being serious for a second. Don't go off quoting scripture on me. I don't need to get beat over the head with the Bible. Deal. Bibles are heavy thanks to the Old Testament. You'd be out cold. Two, this isn't a date. James pauses, but then smiles confidently. Of course not. Done. That's it for the rules? Uh, yeah, for now. So, spontaneously breaking out into song isn't against the rules. Well, technically... James starts singing without a beat to spare. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what you want, what you really gonna want. What I want Exterior, what I want. Barry's Diner, later. <laughs> Liam Nissan pulls up to the diner parking lot. Your Spice Girls rendition was strangely good. So, I guess some boys are really late to hit puberty after all. Uh, you're just jealous. It's cool. <laughs> Interior, Liam Nissan, continuous. Alexis looks up at the Greasy Spoon Diner. Well, this doesn't look like a very holy spot. Interior, Barry's Diner, moments later. Close on, a massive plate of breakfast food. Bacon, sausage, eggs, pancakes, the works. The He-Man special. Back to Alexis' reaction, who is amazingly impressed with her mouth full of food. Mm. Oh, if I could marry a plate of breakfast food, this would be my husband. Mm. You'd have the cutest little sausage, babies. James oh. has a standard burger and fries on his plate. His drink is a hot chocolate. Alexis looks across the table. You seriously got a burger and fries with hot chocolate? Whipped cream on top? I told you, it's brunch. The hot chocolate for breakfast and the burger lunch, thus brunch. I don't think that's how it, well, okay, who cares? <laughs> she raises a brow, letting it go, and then dumps syrup all over the pancake. Oh my gosh, it's so fluffy. You know, the other night you said I was a break from your usual guy. Oh, yeah. I'm a sucker for, what do you call them? Uh, guys who are a little rough around the edges? I dated a guy in community college for a bit, rode a, my, a motorcycle. Nice guys can ride motorcycles too. Oh, got a little bad boy in you, James? Totally. Took 12 items in the 10 item or less line once. 
Might even be in 13. Depends if you wow. count a bag of kiwis as one or two items. Ooh, look at you. Did you go to confession for that? Oh. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Jimbo. Definitely nothing wrong with a nice guy. How about you? What kind of girls have you dated? Oh, me? I, I uh, you know. He takes a big bite of his burger. Sorry, I just uh, <laughs> took a big bite. Oh, wait. James swallows, <laughs> kind of coughs, washes it down with some hot chocolate, tearing up a bit. <laughs> Wrong pipe. So uh, you were asking about my ex-girlfriends. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, geez, <laughs> where, where, where do I start? Oh, I don't know. Just tell me about your last one. Well, she was like 5'3", maybe 5'5", five five with heels. Uh, her name was... Uh, he glances over at a waitress serving a nearby table. Her name tag says Julia. Julia. That was it. Alexis, or anyone really, can see right through James. You don't have an ex-girlfriend, do you, Jim? What? <laughs> what? It's cool if you're waiting for the right one. I respect that. What? No, I, I've got plenty of uh, offers. <laughs> what is this, Shark Tank? <laughs> James realizes he can't lie. Okay, okay fine. Uh, so I haven't technically been in an a uh, relationship, but it's not because like I, I don't want one or couldn't have one. I, I mean, I'd, it'd be easy. I just... Uh... I'm just busting your chops, okay? I might have a friend or two for you, James. I'll hook you up. James smiles, but he's mostly frustrated with himself. Interior, James' car, moments later. James plops down in the driver's seat, key in the ignition. Hey, um, I don't get it. What did our little brunch there have to do with anything about God? Are you kidding me? Barry's pancakes are heavenly. Wow. Starting your case for God off with a bad pun. Seatbelt. We got places to be. Exterior hospital establishing. Liam Nissan drives down a road, stopped at a stoplight. You are literally the first person I've met that has a fear of whales. Monstro is terrifying, okay? It gave me nightmares for years. And tell me how many whales cause human deaths every year. You said weird phobias, okay? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> the light changes green and James turns into the hospital parking lot. Wait. Why are we here? Interior James' car, continuous. James parks. Alexis looks out the window at where they are, seeing the hospital. Just trust me. She raises her eyebrow and opens the door. Alexis' look has entrenched skepticism, but she opens her car door and gets out. Interior maternity ward, waiting room, later. James leads Alexis to the waiting room and gestures for her to have a seat. There are one or two anxious-looking families in the room. Now what? We wait. For what? God. Alexis shoots him a look of bewilderment. A custodian walks through the double doors with water and a mop. Mm, that him? I pictured God with a smaller gut. Just wait. Is he going to be a while? Should I grab a magazine? Right on cue, the doors swing open. There is a young man, male 30s, who bursts through the double doors. A family in particular gets up, a beat as the young man catches his breath. Then he gets a big smile. It's a girl. The family celebrates and gives the dad a big hug. Want to meet her? Alexis and James watch on. James glances over at Alexis. The young man leaves for a moment. Alexis looks over at James. I mean, that is awesome for him. He's a new dad. Like, cool. Right? But like, God, life starts at birth. And ends at death. Life 101, Jim. Doesn't mean God is a part of it. But that right there, I mean, well, why is there something as opposed to nothing? Why bother having human race at all? Biology? Evolution? Okay, hypothetically, let's say God did in fact create that baby. So your God was responsible for all of the miscarriages in the world then too? Baby's lost during childbirth? James thinks for a second, not having a quick answer. The young man comes back out with his newborn baby girl. 
The family is in awe and ogle over it. James gets an idea. Okay, yeah. Uh, why would God put anyone through that suffering? But here's the thing. But we are close on Alexis, and she takes in the scene of the family with the newborn. Her ears start to ring, and James' voice is drowned out. And we smash to interior hospital waiting room flashback four years ago. Ten-year-old Alexis sits in the waiting room with her grandparents. She is asleep. It is late. The doors open. It's her father. Lex, wake up. There's someone we'd like you to meet. Alexis immediately opens her eyes and gets a burst of energy. He's here? Her father smiles. Into your hospital room flashback moments later. 13-year-old Alexis peeks in the room. Alexis' mom is holding baby Frankie in her arms. You can come in, sweetie. Alexis walks Meet. softly over to her mom. Meet her new brother, Frank. Hi. Hi, little Frankie. My brother. Can, can I hold him? Of course. Alexis' mom hands over Frankie. Just as Alexis is about to cradle him, we smash back to interior, maternity ward, waiting room, continuous. Alexis is still staring out, emotionless, caught in the memory triggered by the newborn. Like, that's why those things happen. Could you excuse me for a sec, Jim? Interior hospital bathroom moments later. Alexis stares at herself in the mirror, her eyes welling up, but she's bravely holding back tears. She takes a deep breath. Come on. Keep it together. She takes another deep breath. He's just trying to be nice. Interior maternity ward waiting room moments later. James sits looking out at the family embracing their new member. He can't help but smile. All right, Jimbo, let's get out of here. James turns back to Alexis, who is her usual chipper self. Oh, yeah, sure. It's a boy. It's a boy. Interior Liam Nissan hospital parking lot moments later. James and Alexis get in the car. So, Lexi, my case for God starts at the beginning of it all. The creation of life. Well, technically my case started with pancakes, but that was just a carb-loaded warm-up. So, started with the creation of life. We ending up at the morgue later? <laughs> no, I, I, I figured I'd leave that part out. But even hospitals can be a source of joy. Alexis looks out the window. James takes a deep breath. James has taken a turn away from suburbia in a much more wooded area. It's in the thick of autumn, and the beautiful colors of the leaves are out in full. James lowers the windows. He takes a deep breath. Breathe it in, baby. Alexis looks out the window, the air running through her hair. I'm getting some woody undertones. Hints of manure. It is harvest season. James looks outside. Beautiful. God's out there. In the beautiful. Yeah? Do tell. I mean, through nature. Through this. I mean, every day we are looking at God's creation right before our eyes. And how often do we pass by and not take it in? Poetic, yes. But I suppose God is responsible for earthquakes and volcanoes and hurricanes and all those other wonderful natural things. James thinks for a moment. Yeah, but I mean, that's where trust comes into play. And we're supposed to trust in him when they show up. And in the meantime, I try to give thanks for the beautiful things that are here. You know, you're such a good guy, it's nauseating. Aw, thanks. So, there's no chink in your armor, is there? I have bad posture, sweet tooth, text neck. <sighs> Please. No, like, like your deepest fear, the bane of your existence. A beat as James stares out. Alexis pounces on the silence. Could it be that maybe you're wrong about God? Maybe your perspective is just clouded by good luck? James' silence lets Alexis know she's starting to turn the tide of this debate and that he's never really thought about this. So she continues. What if, what if both of your parents died today in like a random accident? Would you still worship your God then? Another long beat. Boom. 
both of them gone, would you still give thanks for the trees and the leaves and the stars when the two people you love the most are pulled from your grasp? Another beat. James has nothing right now. Alexis realizes she may have pushed a little too hard and feels badly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was, uh, that was dark. I'm being a jerk. I'm just playing a little devil's advocate. James stares out. Being alone. Huh? You asked me what my greatest fear is. the fear of being alone. I'll grow up old and wrinkly and all alone and live in a hobbit hole with a hound dog. A hobbit hole with a hound dog would be awesome. <laughs> but, dude, trust me, that's, that's an irrational fear. A guy like you won't end up alone. Plus, that's a dumb fear for a guy that trusts in God like you do. If God is always with you, you're never alone, right? I, uh, I, I guess. I, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, James. <laughs> James looks out the wooded into the wooded forest as he drives, turning away from Alexis to avoid showing her his emotion, his newfound doubt. All good, lady. We're almost there. The beautiful. Just remember that. Exterior neighborhood a little later. James drives down a residential neighborhood. His demeanor has changed. Stiff, not loosey-goosey. You have now arrived at your destination. You okay? Looking a little not gymish. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine. Uh, we're good. Interior Liam, Liam Nissan continuous. James looks out at a mailbox reading the number. Eight, two, three. Yep. This is it. I picture that Jesus's crib would be a little less residential. All right, let's do this. He leaves the car and Alexis follows, confused. Exterior residential home, moments later. James walks up to the door. Alexis cautiously walking behind. James goes to knock, then hesitates. Nope, nope, nope. He turns around and then turns back around to the door. Dude, what is going on? Fill me in. And then James knocks on the front door, his other hand nervously tapping his side. <sighs> Just watch. A woman, female 40s, opens the door. This is Lizzie's mom. Takes a moment to see James and Alexis, who has her arms crossed. James Fredericks? It's been a while. You filled out nicely since freshman year. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> bagel bites will do that to you. Is Lizzie home? She is. Lizzie, surprise visitor. Lizzie's mom says this with a wink. James looks at Alexis, perhaps for reassurance. Alexis has no idea what's going on. Lizzie's mom leaves as Lizzie comes to the entrance. Lizzie takes a beat to look at James and then at Alexis and then at James again. It's already awkward, but it's about to get worse. Uh James, what are you doing here? Hey, so, uh, Lizzie, uh, I just came here to tell you something. Yeah? With her? He clears his throat, straightening, uh, straightens up his posture. <laughs> I came here to tell you that I forgive you. Forgive me? For what? for throwing mud at me in fifth grade, for creating a Facebook profile for my enormous sit in middle school, for asking me to freshman formal only to stand me up for Henry Garrett. I mean, honestly, for everything else you did that made my life miserable. I forgive you. A beat. Alexis opens her eyes wide. Now she knows why James went here. Who is she? Oh, I'm Alexis. I'm his uh, moral support. Nice to meet you. She holds out her hand. Lizzie looks at it, then at James. Can, can we have a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can have many minutes. <laughs> Alexis leisurely steps off the front porch. Lizzie gets close to James. Lizzie tries to talk under her breath, but anyone in their general vicinity, including Alexis, can hear... Realize why I did all that stuff, right? I don't know, because you're a horrible person. 
listen, it, it doesn't matter why you did it. I forgive you. It's okay. I, I just came here to tell you that. Lizzie looks to the side, sighing. James, 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 James. I did all that stuff because you've been my ultimate crush ever since I first set eyes on you. What? <laughs> they are both being absolutely horrible at keeping this a quiet conversation. Alexis is in the background, just staring up at the sky with a half-amused smile. All I ever wanted to do, all I ever wanted you to do was ask me out. Ask you out? You should have told me, not tortured me. You ditched me at the freshman dance, Liz, and for Henry Garrett? He still collected Pokemon cards when he was 15. Lizzie, getting close to James. I had to play hard to get, Jamesy. Couldn't give in that easily. We torture those we love, you know? That literally makes no sense. James turns back to Alexis, smiles, and gives her the need another minute sign. So you just brought her to make me jealous, didn't you? Give me some competition, make me work for it. Well, James. She's, no, I, I, you know, you were the reason I was afraid to go after any other girls in high school. James, I'm so sorry if I can, if I can just make it up to you in some way, any way, like. And in a beat too quick for James to process, Lizzie leans in and gives him a kiss on the lips. James holds it for a second before quickly breaking it off. I, uh, what? James looks back at Alexis, completely confused and embarrassed. <laughs> Take your time. No rush. That, 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 that's not how this was. Okay, uh, Lizzie, uh, bye. I forgive you. Bye. <laughs> James turns around to Alexis, walking quickly. Come on. Yep, lead the way, Casanova. Call me, James. Interior, Liam Nissan, moments later. James just staring out, driving. After a beat, Alexis starts to laugh. It's a deep belly laugh. James' face is beet red, his normal Joe Cool demeanor taking a hit. <laughs> I know, laugh it up. She laughs harder. Finally, <laughs> it dies down. She wipes happy tears from her eyes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I have not laughed like that since, well, in a really long time. <laughs> okay, oh. I know what you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I am wondering a lot of things. <laughs> what does that have to do with God, James? Glad you asked. That girl was my nemesis growing up. She made me believe that I would never find someone that would like me, let alone love me. I held on to my bitterness, let it influence how I saw other girls, never forgave her. But God, well, he's the king of forgiveness. That was supposed to be the point before, well. You had your little smooch session. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just get this straight, okay. Because you told a girl that you forgive her, that's your evidence that God is real? You're a riot, James. <laughs> James thinks for a moment. Well, if you want to be forgiven by God, we have to forgive others. Well, our little deal made me reflect on places in my life where I, I still wasn't at peace. Well, I'm glad I could help you do that. People can still forgive others and there be no God. It's called being a good, compassionate person. <laughs> whatever it's 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 not a big deal that made my day jimbo pull into this gas station i'll buy us some candy to raise morale james pulls into the gas station what do you want surprise me except not butterfingers those stick to my teeth alexis leaves as soon as she's out of sight james leaps for his phone interior sam's place day sam and joe are bashing on controllers playing overwatch and you are about to be dead, and you're dead! Oh, God, nice kill. Taking people to church today, Joey. Sam's phone rings. He looks down. James' face, doing a Zoolander Blue Steel impression, shows up with his name. Dude, it's James. I think it's good or bad. Sam shrugs and picks it up, puts it on speaker. 
intercut between Joe and Sam slash James as necessary. Hey, James, you're on speaker. How's it going, bro? All right. So my hospital idea tanked hard. <laughs> you took her to a hospital? What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> well, and I accidentally kissed another girl. Oh, God help him. But listen, I, I I don't have much time. She basically thinks this whole thing is just one big joke. Pretty sure she believes in God less now, if that was possible. Sam, Sam, remember your idea about creating an act of God at lunch the other day? Oh, yeah, the one that you guys said was crazy and awful and immediately shut down? Yes, that one. It's a great idea. I need you guys to do me a real solid. I, I need you to give me an act of God. It's my only chance at this point to reach her. Hmm. What do you think, Joe? Playing God. Hello, mortal sin. That's what confession is for, right? I need a base hit bad. My ideas have been tanking. God, God will understand. He wants this for me. He, he put me in her path. A beat. Joe sighs. Oh, okay, fine. Sweet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I got to get a prop or two, but in half an hour, bring her to Franklin Park. Uh, bench by the water fountain. 6 p.m. sharp. We'll take care of the rest. What are you guys going to do? Jimbo, 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 relax. We're your bros. We got you, man. Alexis is coming back from the gas station. Oh, no, she's coming back. Right. Oh, you one, boys. Interior, Sam's place continuous. They hang up. Joe looks anxiously at Sam. What do you have in mind? Sam smirks. Interior, Liam Nissan continuous. Alexis gets in the car. So, I couldn't decide between Sour Skittles, Nut Rages, Cookies and Cream, or Sour Patch Kids, so I bought all four. She takes all four out of the bag. That's perfect. James drives ahead, renewed vigor with his buds on board. There's no need to be embarrassed, James. It was good to see you get some action back there. Sounds like you need it. I promise the next stop will change your mind about God. No doubt about it. Cool. So, James, I want to know more about you. Dreams? Odd talents? Weird phobias? <laughs> Dreams? Uh, I mean, my dream in life is pretty simple, actually. One day I want to be a dad. Really? That's it? I used to say it when I was younger that I wanted to have 10 kids. 10? Oh, James, getting busy. <laughs> what? what? No, 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 no. That's not why. I mean, I mean that needs to occur and all the <laughs> uh -huh. multiple times you are blushing <laughs> <laughs> okay okay I, I would have to get busy but mm -hmm. really i think being a dad would be the coolest you know, teaching my sons and daughters the joys in life about god's love okay okay um let's pause a sec since you keep going back to this god idea hypothetical what if you're wrong about God? What do you mean? You know what I mean. What if when you take your last breath, there's just nothing, just darkness, like before you were born? That's depressing. Alexis' demeanor has changed a bit. She's pressing on, a bit like a lawyer. But seriously, what if you're wrong? I'm not. But you don't know. No one does. Yeah, but that, like, that's faith, believing in something that you can't see. Let's be real, James. That's completely irrational. Well, okay, that's fair, but faith, it's beyond reason. All I know is that it, it's that faith gives me hope. Hope for? Well, all the good things in life. That my prayers will be answered, burdens will be lifted. You are such a hopeless romantic. You know that? Guess I am. So with all these kids, are you going to have a dad bod someday? Oh, yeah. I love burritos way too much not to have a dad bod one day. She looks over at him and smiles. Hot. Exterior pet store, day. 
Sam and Joe walk out of the pet store. In Joe's hand is a cage with three doves inside. Dude, doves are expensive. Yeah, James Lowe is for sure, but this is genius. You and I both know he needs this bad. Into your Sam's car moments later. Joe and Sam enter the car. Sam places the doves in the back seat. They coo. Sam starts to drive. Okay, so text James that we're on our way. Make sure he talks to his girl about doves and love and peace and all that right at 6 p.m. Then when then at that moment we release him, sun will be setting, and all we're missing is a little Barry Manilow in the background. Initiate romance. Joe is texting the message into his phone. Is this really gonna work? I mean, it seems a little overly cinematic. And since when is it a bad thing? Joe shrugs. Exterior Franklin Park continuous. James and Alexis are walking through the park. So let me ask you, when times get hard, who do you turn to? Friends, family, Ben and Jerry. And your atheist just because? A beat. Yep, just because. So what do you believe in? I believe in good people like you. I believe in living my best life here on earth because when we die, like I said, it's just like before we were born. So we're just a, a blimp on the timeline of life. I mean, is that it? Here and gone, nothing else? I, I wouldn't say it like that. I think we can have an impact on others so that we live on in memory. And that is good enough for me. I can live a good life, help all the people, and not believe in God, and I'd still feel great about it. Weren't you raised Catholic? Yeah, yeah. I was a cradle Catholic, and my mom still believes. I can't believe she still does. <laughs> Alexis holds back on that last comment, realizes she, let it, realizes she let a bit too much slip. James catches it, though, and takes the opportunity. Still does. Is there something... There's something more to it, isn't there? Something more than I, I just don't believe. James, why are we at the park? You know you can trust me. I've known you for less than 48 hours. That's true, I mean, I, but I just can't help but feel like, I don't know. I... I'd, I'd drop it, man, okay? It's an open and shut case. Interior of Sam's car, continuous. Sam is driving along, the guy's listening to music. Okay, how are we doing on time? And on time, baby. And our birds of peace? Joe looks back. The doves coo. Peaceful. Sam looks back as well. Oh, yeah, they are adorable. So, so wait, when we release these little guys, how do we get them back? A pot pothole? I mean, I, I kept the receipt and everything. Pot, uh, pothole! Pothole! Sam's attention whoa, whoa. back on the road where there is a pothole, the pothole of all potholes a few feet in front of him. He tries to swerve, but in doing so, he swerves right into it. Bam! The guys get literal air in their seats. The doves do too, and upon landing, the cage door bursts open. The doves instinctively fly out of the cage and freak out inside the car, looking for an exit. Their wings flap, smacking Sam and Joe in the face. Get him out! Get him out! Get birds him of out. peace! I, I thought there were Get birds him. of peace, man! From outside, out. we see Sam's car swerve back and forth until he slams on the brakes. Hit the hit the windows! And Joe frantically reaches for the buttons. window. But the blocks go up and down. The doves still creating mayhem. Oh, There's too many buttons! Sam reaches and finally presses the button to lower the windows. The three doves soar off into the sky, gone for good. Sam and Joe take deep breaths. Feathers float around in the car. Evil beasts. Joe looks at Sam and smiles. On Sam's face is bird poop. It's on my face, isn't it? Yeah. Doves are straight up savage, bro. Yeah. And they're not coming back. They take a moment to compose as Sam regrettably smears the bird poop while trying to wipe it off. Well, that was uh, <clears throat> traumatic. Let Jimbo know he's on his own again. We have failed him. Joe gets out his phone. Godspeed, James. Godspeed. Exterior Franklin Park, evening. 
The sun is starting to set, but there is still activity in the park. People walking dogs, runners going for a jog, an old couple holding hands. James leads Alexis to a bench, a newfound confidence as he believes this act of God will be foolproof. They sit down. You know, Franklin Park, I've been here a million times. I've never seen God picking up dog poop. I just have this feeling deep inside that he's going to make a cameo today. You've said that a lot. I know, but this time is it. Okay. I'm waiting. Well, you know. James sneaks a peek down at his cell phone. It's a minute to 6 p.m. Sometimes God shows himself to us in mysterious ways, like through an act of another person or maybe a symbolic animal or something. Symbolic animal? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, some symbol of the Christian faith, like, I don't know, a, a dove or something. James looks down at his phone, which changes to 6 p.m. right as he looks at it. But instead of doves, he gets a text from Sam. Mission failed. Sorry, bro. You got this. Sam's eyes, James' eyes widen, but he tries to keep it cool. Has something got your attention? That Lizzie girl hitting you up? Up? Uh, no, no, it's, uh... <laughs> thing is are you are you stalling you're stalling aren't you i'm not i'm just james is out of ideas this was his hail mary frustrated you know what never mind you're right god's not showing up here after all alexis clocks his change in demeanor he gets up from the bench he's backed himself into a corner with only one way out look there's got to be more to it well why, why you don't believe. Alexis' look shows annoyance, but she's still trying to keep it professional. James, I get it. You're persistent, and that's how you got me out here today, but I just don't know what to tell you. Well, just tell me the truth. I mean, that's all I want. A long beat as an exasperated James studies Alexis' eyes, searching for an answer. Her eyes soften. Sorry today didn't work out for you, James. I still had fun. James has nothing left other than all-out force. Alexis, you're a good person. I, I know that. Something just isn't adding up to this whole thing. People can just be atheists. Alexis stares out a huge weight on her shoulders. James looks over at a pond not far away. Nothing is working today. Gets a spark. No choice but to go on the aggressive and pull her out of pull it out of her. Okay, here, come here. On Alexis, really frustrated. James' charade is getting kind of old. He leads Alexis over to a dock that overlooks the pond. Okay, if you're going to make some point about baptism by pushing me into this pond, you better think twice, bucko. This, dear Alexis, is a pond, a reflection pond, to be specific. See, look down there. He looks down at the water. James and Alexis' reflection are looking back up at them. Yep, that's us. Okay, you're going to look down at yourself and repeat after me. Is this a setup? I, Alexis. She looks up at him, still unwavering. I, Alexis. She rolls her eyes, looking down at her reflection. I, Alexis. What are these, vows? I forgive you. I forgive you. Wait, why am I forgiving you? No, not me. Her. He points down at the pond. Alexis looks down at her reflection, stares at herself. Say it to her. I forgive you. Come on, it'll feel good. What am I forgiving myself for? Whatever it is that's burdening your heart. No. Just do it, it'll feel good. James, stop, stop, okay? Was this part of your grand plan today? Because it sucks. For once in this whole day, Alexis' tone is that of anger. She turns around and rushes away from the pond. James follows her. Why can't you just say it? It'll feel good. She hears the laughter of children in the background. She looks back to see two young kids playing tag at the playground. It stops her in her tracks. Thank you. Alexis? Alexis turns solemn, nearly expressionless. I can't do this anymore, James. You wanted the truth, so if you'll stop bothering me, then fine. 
you'll get it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to bother you. Tell me, let me tell you about my God, how he is. James is about to say something more, but figures it best to let her finish. She points to a spot on the playground in Franklin Park. Three and a half years ago, I was standing right over there, right by that tire swing. I was keeping an eye on my four-year-old brother, Frankie. Exterior, playground, day, flashback. 14-year-old Alexis stands by the tire swing. Her little brother, Frankie, male four, is tossing a ball to himself next to her. Alexis' parents, Jenna, female 40, and Robert, male 40, 40s, are nearby. Another set of parents arrive at the playground. Jenna and Robert recognize them. Hey, guys. Lexi, hun, watch your brother for a minute, okay? Sure, Mom. I got Frankie. However, 14-year-old Alexis is absorbed in her phone. Play ball with me, Lexi. Not now, Frankie. I'm texting David. Boo, you're no fun. Frankie punts the ball. It's an impressive kick, but it bounces towards the street. Alexis looks down at her phone, smiling at a flirtatious text sent by David with heart emojis around his name. Young love. We see Frankie chase after the ball, out of focus in the background. Alexis at last texts, gotta play with my little bro. Let's talk later. Smiley face. Sends. All right, Frankie, now let's play. She looks up from her phone. Frankie isn't there. She whips around, watching in horror as Frankie runs after his ball into the street, and a car is backing up out of a parking spot. Frankie is in the blind spot. Frankie! Stop! Frankie! We hear a thump. Smash to black. Interior hospital day. Flashback. Jim. Dear God, didn't take my little brother's life that day. Alexis is kneeling at Frankie's bedside. He is hooked up to all sorts of machinery. Alexis is kneeling in prayer. For 10 days, I kneeled by my little brother's bedside. For 10 days, I didn't leave that room. Praying, begging your God to bring back my brother. Frankie was there because of me. For 10 days, I prayed for God to bring him back. We see various times of the day. Alexis next to her brother in prayer. She never leaves as time lapses. Interior church day flashback. A casket with a picture of little Frankie on top. Alexis is in the front row staring out blankly. Numb. Her parents are next to her. Her mother with dried tears and her father with stoic sadness. But he didn't. God had a chance and he turned the other way. If your God had been there in the hospital, Frankie wouldn't have died, Jim. Exterior, Franklin Park, playground, dusk, back to present. We are on James, who is currently speechless. He's staring out, trying to take it all in. Alexis stares at that spot, but continues to have a stoic resolve. But in her eyes is nothing but pain and guilt. They well up, but no tears fall. My parents' marriage couldn't handle what happened. It's just me and my mom now. You see, James, the root of your faith is based on the fact that you've had a pretty damn good life. Try living just one day of your life in my shoes, living with the guilt and pain of what happened. James is still silent. You could have told me told you. Tell a guy I just met that I'm responsible for the death of my little brother? <laughs> a great idea. Yeah, I don't tell anyone that. I wanted today to be carefree and fun. You know, I like you for your wit, for your awkward charm, but gosh, you, just, you wouldn't let it go, James. Come here. Alexis walks over to a small tree by the playground. Below it is a plaque in loving memory of Frankie Calloway. There, there's my truth. Are you happy now? You can fix it. God. Alexis <laughs>, laughs, not true laughter, but laughter more from anger. Fix what? Oh, okay. I get it, poor Alexis, she's the broken one. Hmm? What if you're the one who's broken, James? What if you're the one who's wrong? Alexis registers her own anger, takes a pause. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm, um, it's, it's starting to get late. So could you please just take me home? James, still silent, can only muster a nod. 
He's deep in thought, though. Interior, Liam Neeson, moment, Liam Neeson, moments later. Alexis and James sit in the car in silence. James, you're a great guy. I know I've been uh, hard on you today. It's a real pain in the ass. And I am sorry that today took a rough turn. James thinking. If it's any consolation, I knew that you weren't going to be able to prove anything to me about God today. To be honest, I just really enjoyed your company the other night. That's why I said yes to you. So quit wallowing and be James again so this ride home isn't super awkward. Alexis opens her phone to check the time. James sees the background. That's him, isn't it? What? Little hands on your phone, holding the firefly. Those are Frankie's hands. Alexis goes into her phone, scrolls, clicks on a photo, the full photo. We see the hands belong to little Frankie. He's beaming, a huge smile on his face, having caught a lightning bug. They are. Chasing fireflies was his favorite thing to do, ever. He'd try and drive for hours to catch one, and then when he finally did, <sighs> the pride on his little face. <laughs> Alexis smiles to herself. James thinks, and there is a silence for a beat. She clicks out of her phone. Look, no one should ever, ever have to go through what you went through. But Alexis, God is still there. He's with you in all of your pain, I, I, I promise. Alexis snickers, which then turns into a laugh while shaking her head. She then composes herself. Jim, you're a really nice guy, but that is delusional bullshit. You are wrong. And I'm not going to argue with you either. It was fun seeing what you planned today. Pretty cute, actually. But please, let's just go home. She looks outside, seeing her surroundings. Speaking of which, James, this isn't the way back to my place. I have one more stop. James. Please, I, I just want to take you to one more place. Another long beat. I'm exhausted, okay? I'm, I'm done, man. James gets a realization. That's why you can't do it. That, that's why you couldn't forgive yourself at the pond. Alexis looks outside of their location and her demeanor immediately changes. Turn left. What, what, that's not, where am I? Alexis reaches over in a quick beat, grabbing the wheel. She jolts it to the left and sends Liam Nissan onto a new road. What are you doing? Do a U-turn and take me back. What, just, just, just one more. Please. A loud pop scares Alexis and James and Liam Nissan slowly, slowly chugs to a halt. Smoke rises out of the engine. Oh, really, Liam, now? Exterior, wooded area, night. James gets out of the car, lifts up the front. Smoke pours out. Alexis gets out as well. Well, that's perfect. This is why you should have just given up and taking me home. Alexis gets out her phone and looks at it, frustrated. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Verizon. You got any reception? Nope. Alexis, with her arms crossed, starts walking away quickly. Where are you going? Getting out of this dead zone. They are quickly heading back to the intersection where Alexis abruptly made James turn. You can just tell me what your last stop was, okay? We, we obviously aren't going to make it there tonight. It was a surprise. Alexis is at the intersection, pulling out her phone again, hoping for some reception. Okay. Okay, good. I've got reception. I'm going to give an Uber a ring, Jim. You should too. Wait just a second. James looks down the road to the left where he wanted to go. It turns, shrouded by trees. What is down that way? Wow. An Uber is only three minutes away. In this area, that is God at work. <sighs> Let's talk about life. Hey, you said you're an Eagles fan, right? James realizes his last window to reach Alexis is closing. You know, if I were you, I'd be really angry too. 
what if this whole thing isn't about not believing in God, but just, but just that you're angry with him? Jalen Hurts, is he the future of Philly football? Well, and you should be angry. You should be mad at God. That's not fair. It's not fair what happened with Frankie. This hits Alexis and she starts to stomp away. She looks back at James. Stop following me. And don't ever bring Frankie up again. Okay, I shouldn't have told you. To talk to him. Talk to God. Tell him you're angry. He, he listens. Alexis turns around now infuriated. Things are being purged that haven't been addressed in years. I am not talking to something that's not there. You know what, James? All you did today was reaffirm to me that God does not exist. You proved that babies are born and nature is around us. You told a girl you forgave her. whoop de frickin do You don't need God for any of that. Yes, you do. He can change your heart if you let him, Alexis. Why won't you do it? Why won't you just forgive yourself? You're really trying to convince me that I'm broken, aren't you? Well, I can assure you there is nothing wrong with me. If you just would have listened to me at the night of the dance, today would have never happened and everything would have been just fine. Liam Neeson could have broke down anywhere today. Why did he break down right here? Why that turn? That's God at work. James breathes heavily, frustrated and beaten. A car pulls up. It has the Uber logo on it. You're a nice guy, James. Okay, don't change. But please don't ever talk to me again. Trust me, I'm asking that for you, not me. Before James can say anything, Alexis gets in the Uber and drives away, not looking out at James. He stands there for a moment, defeated, alone, without hope, and he looks up at the sky. Where are you now, huh? Are you actually up there? I mean, I needed you today. You heard me. I needed you, and you ignored me. Nothing. Just the sounds of nature. James looks out, a sad and sudden realization across his face. Am I just talking to nothing? Am I the one who's wrong? James' eyes well up. Then he looks down at the road that Alexis was avoiding, turns on his phone flashlight and starts walking that way. Exterior wooded area night. James rounds the corner. The woods open up to exterior grave, graveyard, continuous. A graveyard on the right side of the road, eerie, dark, and empty. James walks up towards it. He starts scanning the graves. Then one gravestone looks relatively new. On it reads Frankie Calloway, September 9th, 2012, October 14th, 2016. James simply sits in front of the grave, head in his hands, trying not to cry. Why'd you do that, God? Why'd you take him away? Why, why didn't you listen to Alexis? Please, God, if, if you're listening to me, give me another sign, please. But there's no shooting star, no great gust of wind, no nothing. James can't help but sob. Damn it. James lies on his back in the graveyard, looking up. Exterior graveyard a little later. Headlights shine on James, who is waiting at the outskirts of the graveyard. Interior, Christopher's car, moments later. James sits in the passenger seat, looking out the window, resting on his hand. James, er, Christopher looks over at his beleaguered son. He lets his son rest in the moment for a beat. He knows he probably doesn't want to talk about whatever just happened. Sorry about Liam. He was a, uh, a great car. Okay. I called the tow guys. They'll, they'll get him to a garage. Another beat as James stares out into nothingness. What if we're wrong? What? About God, about Jesus, about heaven. What if we're wrong? What if there's nothing? What if it all was created by chance? Oh, buddy, come on. You know that's not true. But how do you know? Well, how does anybody know? Christopher thinks for a beat. I, I can feel it, James. I, I can feel it in my heart. James is bringing out his inner Alexis a bit. Well, see, that's not good enough. Not at all. What if my faith is based purely on good fortune? Let me put it this way. If, if you think you're going to make it through this life without your faith being challenged, I mean, really challenged, then 
I've got bad news for you, son. I, I believe that God gives us certain situations to test our faith. But that doesn't make any sense. All it does, it, gives, it, it just gives us a reason to doubt. That's logical. It's, it's tough to understand sometimes. But, but I think God tests us because he doesn't know how strong we are. He tests us because we don't know how strong we are. James looks over at his dad, still not fully on board. Interior James' room later. James lays on his bed looking up at the ceiling. He then looks over at the crucifix on the wall. Why her? Why did you send me to her? James stares back at the ceiling. Why her? Interior cafeteria day. Sam and Joe look at James. I don't know about you, Sam, but that's the worst first date story I've ever heard. She literally Ubered to get away from you. And then you kissed another girl? Like She kissed me. Utterly a disaster. Gee, thanks, guys. And it wasn't a date anyway. Hey, at least she now knows the glory of Barry's pancakes. Hey, man, and sorry the whole dove bit tanked. It was going to be a surefire win if it weren't for that pothole. I mean, why are there so many of them in Pennsylvania? Like, what? It wouldn't have mattered, man. Whole thing doesn't matter. I got a whole lot of nothing. I could have sworn God gave me a sign. Turns out he was just messing with me the whole time. Don't say that. You never know what he's cooking up. So, are you going to text her? Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Amateur hour? <laughs> you got to wait at least three days, probably more, like five after a date like that. <laughs> nope. Gonna leave her alone. It's for the best. Dang, man. Well, listen, you got a cool seven months till college, and then this girl is just gonna be a distant memory. James stares out. Yeah, you're right. Interior hallway later. James packs up his locker and starts to walk out of the school. Mr. Fredericks. James turns around. What's up, Father Jacobs? Just wanted to know how your little uh, courtship went over the weekend. Strongly considering seminary now. Oh. Uh, talk to me. Everything I did to try to prove her God's existence, I mean... She could give me an equally strong argument as to why he doesn't. I see. James, what the young lady may not understand is that loving Christ is a choice. I choose to believe in God. It gives me hope and strength during hard times. And it helps me to, to love others. Sure, no one has to believe in anything. If your lady friend chooses to be an atheist, that's your choice. You don't have to agree with it and you can give her reasons to believe, but at the end of the day, she gets to decide. That's free will, my man. I, I just wanted so badly to. I don't know. I, I just made a fool of myself and made her mad. Mm. Well, just remember that we choose to believe. I do, however, have to give you, uh, what do you kids say nowadays? Uh, props. Yeah. What giving, getting a massive rejection? You, James, whether you succeeded or not, were a disciple yesterday. Oh, come on, that's not true. You showed selflessness. You lived through the word. And most importantly, whether that young lady realizes it or not, you showed her what true biblical love is. Willing the good of another. James lets this statement reflect for a moment. The world needs more young people like you, James. Yeah, I am pretty sweet, aren't I? <laughs> Disciple James has a nice ring to it. Sounds familiar, though. 
There's the James we know and love. Listen, don't get down, young man. We all have doubts. I'd be worried if you didn't. Just ask God to help your faith grow. It won't let you down. Thanks, Father. James walks down the hallway. Father Jacobs look at, looks at him like a proud father. Interior, James House, dining room, later. James sits across from his father. James, I, I wish I had better news. No. It was the engine. I'm afraid Liam Nissan has driven his final mile. James is surprisingly emotional. It was my first car. Do I get to say goodbye? James looks down his phone. October 14th. The date rings a bell. Dad, can I borrow your car? Exterior, Franklin Park, reflection pond, later. We are on Alexis. She stares down, a somber expression on her face. I... I... This is so dumb. I... I forget. <laughs> a drop falls into the water, a tear. She wipes her eyes and turns around. She looks across the park by the playground. By Frankie's trees memorial is James on his knees, praying in front of it. She could easily sneak out without an interaction, but exterior, Franklin Park, Frankie's tree, moments later. James is kneeling there, eyes closed. Odd place for a nap. James, startled. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have interrupted whatever you were doing. It looked like you were talking to my brother's tree. Yeah, you know, uh, it was. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I got it. Uh, hey, can I get you dinner at Barry's? My treat. Interior, Barry's Diner, Dusk. Alexa sits in a booth with the pancakes. Across from her is a burger with fries and a hot chocolate. A beat. I wanted to leave you alone. I was going to leave you alone. But then I saw you there at the park and figured maybe, I don't know. It was a sign? Listen, I want to tell you, um, I want to tell you a quick story. For weeks, months, years after I lost Frankie, I still prayed to God. I prayed so hard, James. I prayed that he would give me a sign. Give me a sign that Frankie was okay. Give me a sign that God was actually there. Just one. Just one sign, one thing, and it never came. So I gave up. He wasn't listening to me, so why bother? So I stopped praying, and he never gave me that sign until yesterday. Everywhere you had me go, everything we did, the hospital, Lizzie, the reflection pond, none of it really meant anything to me. It, it did nothing to prove God. But you know, by failing in all of that, you may have actually succeeded. Because if there was any figment of proof of God, you know where it was? It was you. The lengths that you went to, to try to get me to believe, you never gave up. You pulled things out of me that I was pushing down for years. And you were right. There is an undeniable burden on my heart. I never released anything. I only buried it. So at the end of the day, you showed me love. <laughs> tough love maybe but love really 
so in some weird roundabout way, James, you did what you set out to do. A beat. James is blown away. A beat. Could have fooled me. Listen, Alexis, I, I ended up going down that road that night to the graveyard. I know that today is a tough day. The topic. Listen, can I please take you to my last spot? Alexis thinks, then resigns. Okay. Let me just eat all the pancakes first. Okay. Interior, Christopher's car, a little later. Alexis is in the passenger seat, her eyes closed. The sun is barely peeking over the horizon, about to be fully dark. Can I open them yet? You know I hate surprises. We're almost there. I must say, I'm really sorry about Liam. I miss his weird, musty old man smell. Old man smell. He's the James <laughs> Bond of cars. <laughs> But yeah, he, he was great, wasn't he? Exterior Forest Hills Overlook, a little later, night. James leads Alexis out of the car. Still gotta keep them closed? Yep. You aren't taking me to Forest Hills Overlook, are you? I recognize the cobblestone we're stepping on. <laughs> this is a classic makeout spot. So bold move if that's your destination. Do you have godlike kissing abilities? Was that the final proof? You know, that might have worked. <laughs> Josh, Josh. <laughs> Exterior Forest Hills Overlook moments later. They are at the top of the overlook. It is a clear night. A beautiful view of the suburban area mixed within the countryside. Alexis still has her eyes closed. I'll let you open them in a second. I'm going to do one thing first, if you'll let me. Okay. Just hold my hand. Just like to lead us in a little prayer. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. You do you. James grabs Alexa's hand. They sit side by side. James closes his eyes. Dear Jesus, it's me, your buddy James. I just want you to watch over this young, beautiful, smart, Clever, charismatic. Keep going. Young lady, right here next to me. Please, please help her take away her pain, Lord. Ease her suffering, help her to heal, and most importantly, give her the strength to forgive herself. Watch over Frankie, Lord. He entered your kingdom four years ago today. And please, God, watch over us. Alexis, tears streaming down her face, allowing herself to cry, joins the prayer. Why did you do this to me, God? Why did you do that? That's not fair. James grab Alexis. James grabs Alexis's hand as she says this, rubs her hand as he she says this through sobs. Why did you take him away from me? I am still so, so angry with you. James half smiles with his eyes closed. She's praying again. I asked you, I begged you, I, I begged you to save my life. But you didn't. You didn't. If you are listening, and if you are actually there, I am sorry. And she cries. James rubs her shoulders. I'm really sorry. A beat. James waits, but Alexis is done. Please, Lord. Please help us to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alexis doesn't say it, but she mouths, amen. James opens his eyes. He drops his mouth in awe. To his disbelief, 
a single firefly has started to light up in front of Alexis and James. Alexis, open your eyes. Alexis opens her eyes to see the firefly. What? Is it? She puts out her cup, cupped hands. The firefly lands in them. It lights up her smiling face as tears stream down his face. He's okay. James nods. <laughs> Thank you so much. Alexis releases the firefly and it flies away. Others start to light up the area. The two say nothing, gazing out over the stunning out outlook. And then Alexis leans her head on James' shoulder. Interior Alexis' bathroom later. Alexis walks into her bathroom, fairly overwhelmed. She stares at herself in the mirror. I've... I've forgiven. She looks deeply at herself. She points at herself, her finger shaking. I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you. Interior James' house, dining room, days later. James comes into the dining room. He's looking fresh. I smell cologne. Ooh, ee. Yeah, yeah. I'm running late. I gave the car, the new car, a test run yesterday. It runs like a charm. Have fun, dear. Exterior, Alexis's house later. James drives up to Alexis's house with his new car, a Kia. She's on the front porch, dressed in a flowery blouse. James honks. Alexis comes over, gets in the passenger side. Honking. What a gentleman. <laughs> Sweet ride. I'd like to introduce you to Kia New Reeves. Oh. Get it? Because it's a... Yeah, yeah. You, know, you would. <laughs> oh my gosh. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. James turns the key. The car engine starts. It's not impressive. Ooh, listen to that purr. Just drive, you weirdo. We track out as the car drives along. We don't know where they're going, but it doesn't really matter. Shots of the car driving along the countryside as James narrates. So, as you can see, God did answer my prayers in a totally unexpected and difficult way. I guess that's how he works sometimes, isn't it? Just his own way of saying, come on, James, come closer to me. Well, I'm here, Jesus. James and Alexis share a look and smile. We're here. Fade out. End of play. All right, gosh. Oh, man. I wasn't ready for the play to be done because I'm cleaning up my eye makeup. Cast, turn your videos on. Um, come join me. Come say hi. Let's do a let's do a Q and A. Oh, even Mike's man. I, I saw even the writer Mike wiping a tear away. So <laughs> good stuff, man. And I just gotta say, um, I've read this script a few times um, in the writers group with Mike, and um, yeah, it's y'all just like knocked it out of the park. I mean, Allegra, you're killing me. You're literally killing me. You're killing the chat. Like just like I said, I've I've read this a few times and just couldn't just couldn't witch ya just couldn't stupid eye makeup um, and also Kaiser I didn't realize just how much uh, speaking you have to do so <laughs> I hope that you rest your voice for like two days um, and Giovanni gosh what a what a what an adorable lovable um, dude not hard to see why Alexis falls in love with you and just great job to everyone. Um, this was this was so much fun um, to see it read out with the full um, cast and everybody who um, you know has been in the chat. Uh, again, we have about 350 people here, um, so the chat is moving really fast. So if you do have a question um, to uh, you know that you want to ask Mike or any of the actors, you know, feel free to ask it. But I'm I I I, 
I warn you that the chat is moving so fast that it's gonna, I'm not gonna be able to catch every question. Um, but uh, yeah, so this was, this was really great. Um, so the first thing that I wanna ask the chat um, is uh, the chat, chat. Uh, first question that I wanna ask for you guys is what was the most memorable thing that happened to you in this play? Um, what do you think, you know, like what moment was it that you liked the most? What popped the most? What, you know, when you're talking to your friends about how you spent your afternoon or your morning or why were you up at five in the morning or why were you up at 11 p.m.? What are you going to tell them? Like, oh, there's this one part. Like, what's going to stand out to you guys? Write out, um, you know, please write in the chat what moment it is that popped to you because that stuff is so valuable to the writer. I'm sure Mike is like, yeah, give it to me. So, um, you know, what, what specific moments popped that you were just like, yeah, that just knocked it out of the park. And we will, um, we will uh, save this chat and share this with Mike. But I would actually love to hear from the actors while the, while the chat is um, sharing this. I would love to hear from, gosh, let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pick on Allegra, if that's OK. Um, because she's the one who ruined my eye makeup. So I'm going to pick on her first. Um, but I would love to ask Allegra, what was the, what was the moment in this? Um, and you guys uh, in the chat and it, you attendees can see, this is typically how we do a writer's group is we all kind of discuss, you know, things afterward, um, kind of what we thought and stuff like that and give the writer like tips and tricks and ideas. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just pretend that like, you know, this is our writer's group and this is what we're doing. Um, so Alexis uh, slash Allegra, would you mind sharing with me like, you know, what your favorite moment from this script was? Like what really pops or what really stood out to you that you're like, that's, you know, like that was like my favorite point or that was like the saddest point or like this is the thing that I'm going to walk away with. Um, yeah, I think overall that a thing that really resonated with me personally and, and also in my faith journey is and I think what kind of tugs at me internally is really resonating with James's character in, do I believe because I believe it? Or do I believe because I've had a really good life and I just feel blessed all the time, you know? And, and, um, and I have nothing to complain about. And that, that nugget, that line that he says, particularly towards the end with his dad, when he's like, is this, is the, and, and that she calls him out on it too. Like, are you standing behind what you say for a reason? Or are you standing behind what you say because you don't know anything else and it's just prosperity and you've not actually ever had to go anything through anything that has tested your faith or caused you to question. Um, and I think, oh, I can hear my AirPods dying. <laughs> um, so if I cut out, I'm sorry. But um, but that really, that was the through line that really resonated with me because it's so real and so human. I really connected with that. Great. And you just did such a great job of um, just great work, this whole cast. I'm sorry. I just want to like fan gush all over it. Um, you know, the moments with George and Alex, you guys were hilarious. Um, Maria and... Um, Vincent, uh, who stepped away for a second, um, what great parents he's got, Carl and Hillary, mad props to you guys for being the multi-characters. You know, some of you guys might have noticed that um, Carl and Hillary popped in doing different stuff. So thank you so much for um, that. And Zuri, of course, um, always, always fun to have you around. And um, uh, yeah, and also congratulate uh, Hillary's little boy Campbell on his debut. Um, he did a great job as well. That was super fun. Um, but I would love to hear from the rest of the cast. What was the moment that popped to you that you're like, what I'm thinking about, you know, like if you had to be like, Mike, like, don't you dare change a thing about, you know, this one moment. Um, like this was the thing that's gonna, that's really gonna stick with me or that was really unique. Like, I'd love to hear, just go ahead and unmute yourself cast and let me know what your favorite moment was. It's really hard because there's so many great moments. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just, um, I love the dance scene, like both dance scenes, um, having those two next to each other is a lot of fun. It's so much fun. And I think that um, just looking back at my high school days, like you kind of hit the nail on the head on that, 
the the um the vibe of those <laughs> those uh sidelines like waiting there and then but also kind of like the fantasy of going to this other dance you know where you actually like really hit it off with the girl that you're like looking to hit it off with so i i really loved those two scenes together i thought they were so much fun yeah looks like um erica loved the dove plan um, <laughs> a lot of people love the humor and the seriousness um great performances a lot of people like when alexis forgave herself that was a good one good um father jacob's wisdom um the twist regarding lizzie was really fun um, i'm not sure if you guys heard but eventually lizzie you know kisses uh kissed him uh when she was like oh you know i like you and so yeah so a lot of people yeah a lot of people like the when alexis forgave herself agreed that's great mike because you know you want the crux you want that pinnacle of the play to be the the great part um cast anybody else that wants to weigh in and say what their what their favorite moment was mm -hmm. i have to agree that i love that they're i love the doves going wrong and i just love the the characters of, of joe and sam in general and having the doves attack them in the back of the car but anybody else i think giovanni raise your hand what's your favorite yeah i mean there's so there's a lot of moments it's hard to to pick just just one a couple that come straight to mind well first i love the the balance between humor and and just diving into the uh the emotion of this so it's a really good balance um things that really spoke real to me is when james is in the car with his dad after he's kind of feels like he's failed to get through to uh you know to her and uh he's kind of having that moment to where he is doubting himself. Like, is everything that I believed in um, not what I, what I thought. And I think we've all kind of felt that. I know I've felt that in, in areas of, of my faith growing up to where it was like, you feel like I'm do, I'm trying to do all the right things here. I'm trying to be the best person I can and really, uh, you know, just do good in this world. And it's like, is, is it all for something that I, that, that maybe is not there, but then, there's that turning moment to where it's like, oh yeah, it's like, it definitely is. But I just thought that was a real moment for me to, I think a lot of people can relate to, to where it's just like the doubt starts creeping in and then it's like, what do you, you know, what's going to happen after that? It yeah, might've been great. just such a smaller, like, you know, it's a, it's, it's a small scene, but it's very powerful because I think it's very relatable. I have to admit that I really, I really like it as well because in Christian media, sometimes you can see the protagonist as very like their their faith is impenetrable and i you know we would all like that to be true right we would all like our faith to be something that nobody can't nobody touch but you know we all know that there's areas where we struggle and so i loved that that your that your character james like that he started to be like oh man oh well she's got some good points too because that just shows also i think that you know, that people who are, you know, who are atheists and stuff like that can have strong arguments and can have good arguments and stuff like that. And just shows, you know, shows that those arguments are to be like respected and taken seriously. Um, you know, we want to hold on to our faith, of course, and, uh, but, but, you know, that we should be respectful and listening to, you know, of people who, who have um, different views and stuff like that. So I appreciated, um, I appreciated that. Um, and yeah, uh, you got something, Zuri? So it kind of tackles a few things. Um, when Alexis finally kind of releases her anger, in that moment, it, for me, it tackled the idea of anger in, in females, like this idea that we just don't get mad or we can't or we have to subdue it or whatnot. Um, stages of grief, to be angry, but then to accept that. And then also when it comes to faith, I know growing up, I had such a hard time dealing with grief and understanding like, no, it's okay to be angry at God. Like it's part of your faith like it's it's your journey it's so personal it's really up to you so i thought that moment was just a beautiful encompass of all three things that i think a lot of people could really learn from and grow from and also use it as their own way to kind of understand how to heal thank you for sharing i've got another question for the chat now and another question oh carl's got something though go ahead carl Oh yeah, I just wanted to tune in to let you know, kudos to the writer for sure. This was a roller coaster for me. The first time I read the script, I was visiting my family in Indiana. I was sitting in the living room and I was tearing. I'm like, oh my gosh, Carl, this is not for real. So chill out. Um, 
but listening to this and seeing the actors actually bring it to life, wow, the roller coaster ride was on. I liked the comedy in it with the doves. It really lightened it up for me. I loved the reactions, just watching the actors, how they worked off this uh, script. And also I really, what really resonated with me was when James was asking God, are you up there? Because I really get the desperation. And I know I'm not the only one out there where in times of our life, we just feel like we're at wit's end and we're like, are you listening? Is there a God out there? I need help. Are you gonna help me? And, you know, and I find myself asking God so many questions. And then I have to say, Carl, chill out. Let's listen for an answer. I'm so busy asking that I'm not getting busy listening. And that's what resonated with me. So that's it. I've got another question for the chat and for the actors as well. Who is your favorite character? Who is your favorite character? Um, Vincent's got one. Mute myself. Oh. There you go. Um, I, I, Giovanni, Giovanni was great. There, it, it's a fine line, and the writing also, Michael too. It's a fine line. Giovanni just was awesome um, between being cheesy and real, and it was just the writing and the way Giovanni delivered it. it was just it was great. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're you're awesome. <laughs> Very entertaining. Sure. Yeah. Who else? What else? We got a lot Can of I James. Jump in? Oh yes, please. Yeah, I I, I think uh, every first of all, congratulations to everybody to Mike. I mean, this is a awesome script. Such a, a tremendous script. Um, the balance to the whole story, to the characters, um, beautiful performances. Uh, Allegra Giovanni. Uh, every everybody just handled it um so so thank you so much for doing this um so amazing the thing i think the thing for me that really kind of uh, aside from the 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 dramatic elements of the uh the film uh i really found myself laughing out loud with the banter between joe and sam like i i was literally howling at times because it was just so ridiculous these two guys but i completely bought them you know like they're totally believable outrageous you know high school buddies and so uh, so well performed by alex and george and um yeah so i i got a lot of belly laughs out of that so thank you for that i also gotta admit that i loved um the peanut gallery i loved um joe and sam and they're kind of foil to to um i mean they're just like you know those sidekicks in a disney movie that are the ones that are just always making you laugh and um so i yeah i just I, I love that as well um gotta admit that i was really also impressed by george's um american accent i've never heard your typical accent though for anyone who hasn't uh george would you mind just speaking without your accent for a second yeah good day everyone thanks very much that's very nice to say <laughs> i was gonna yeah. i was wondering do i make sam aussie i don't know if it made much sense <laughs> he was just gonna pop in as an aussie um no Strange i good. i loved it. There's a really great. What was that? Sorry, exchange. He's a foreign exchange student. Yeah, yeah just yeah, randomly. <laughs> but your American uh, was just so. It was so hilarious, dude. He's like, bro. You know, you know no. who? You know who I based it off? It was Steve Stifler from American Pie. Like the first <laughs> line that I said, I was like, dude, what? Stifler's dude? mom. Of course. <laughs> So that that's makes so much sense, man. I, I kind of I was like, what am I going to get? Just all his lines. And that's a really, that's uh, props to the writer as well. I think that's a like someone in there said, um, it was like Timon and Pumbaa. That's one of the comments, but it's really mm -hmm. good. Like, like what you were saying, Denise, before um, that whole idea of, you know, uh, it, we, we face the same thing in The Chosen. That's what makes, uh, you know, a project like this and even The Chosen so good is that, you know, it's the, the lead character, let's just say Simon, for example, Simon Peter is not, unwavering he wavers a lot and so when you have real characters like that that's when the story is a lot um you know it's it's a lot more real and i think there's a lot of real characters in this and yeah you know sam and joe they're they're probably they probably got the best intentions they probably intend for the same thing but uh, yeah like, like i think it was like they were each side of the shoulder you know like the two little minions on each of his shoulder trying to convince him to do each things um so yeah it's a, it was it, it created a great little like they said peanut gallery for that but yeah this is my accent as well so that was the main point for me to <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you i love it and 
I have to say, I also love Alexis's character. Maybe it's because I'm a chick and I'm biased, right? I love a well-written female character, but also um, just, uh, she has, su she's such a deep, she's, she's got so much complexity, right? You meet her at the top, at the top of the, you know, the, per the Alexis that you meet at the top of the uh, screenplay is totally different from the Alexis that you meet at the end. Um, and again, I like, because I think that it can be a temptation in Christian media to portray people who are not Christian as innately bad. And we, we don't think that she's bad. You know, she's lovable. She's likable. We, we understand that she has a backstory and stuff like that. And so, um, I like that, that, yeah, just that she is, uh, is that we feel for her and that we love her very much. And yeah, just getting so much more Allegra, um, love in the chat, um, Allegra, I'm just going to download this whole chat and send it to you. Um, I just want to let everyone know that um, if you liked Allegra's performance, you can catch her on upload on um, Amazon Prime. Um, she just filmed season two. I'm not sure if you know when season two is going to go back up. Do you know when it's going up? I wish I knew. There are rumors, but I hear, I mean, every couple of weeks I get a new, maybe this month, maybe that month. So it, it'll, who knows, <laughs> but soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, soon. I wanted, um, I wanted to uh, actually just really quickly um, piggyback on that. The thing that I really love is how often, if you count how many times Alexis says to James, you're a good guy, you're a nice guy, you're a great guy, you're a good guy. And then it goes, but, 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 but. She continues to affirm him, even though she's disagreeing with him, which I think is really um, valuable in this character too, that she's not writing him off completely. She's acknowledging there's something I like about you and I disagree. It's, um, it's refreshing. And I think it also is gonna keep her from being villainized too, um, to a degree, you know? Just wanna throw that in there. Mike, you got a question? Uh, well, not a question. I just, I, I, I need to tell, tell the group, you know, I've, I've read this probably a hundred times on the page. Um, and, and just today I was a, a puddle, you know, I was la like belly laughing, like Jonathan said, it was truly, truly the highest compliment you can give a writer is to have something read so beautifully. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, Kai, Giovanni, Maria, Jonathan Campbell, you're wonderful. Zuri, Maria, Alex, George, Vincent, Hillary, and, and, and Denise, thank you for putting this together. So I have so much gratitude for you all. Um, and, and just, um, uh, um, very humbled. By, by this reading. So um, to bring those words to life, James, you're the, per or Giovanni, you're the perfect, like, aw shucks character. And um, yeah, Allegra, way to nail uh, Alexis, just because like you said, Denise, it's, it was very important that she's not the antagonist in, in the script. The antagonist is, is doubt. Um, so it was, it was uh, just blew, blew all of my expectations. So uh, thank you so much. Great. Oh yeah, George? I was just going to say, I thought I prepared well by bringing a PlayStation controller as my prop. And then Allegra and Giovanni are sitting there like, absolutely. Like I, I was watching a movie. Like I was literally sitting here just watching a movie. It was fantastic. You guys were great. And you held up the whole thing so well. So yeah, I also had my, my glass of punch from the ball, but man, you guys brought it. So I just wanted to give you guys a good, big congratulations. That was incredible. So did you, bud. You, you guys' scenes were hilarious. I loved it. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you. And um, I think we have time for one more question from the chat. So if anyone wants to, if you want to type your questions into the chat really quick, I can, uh, we can probably have time for um, one more, uh, but I don't want to keep everyone uh, too long. So um, let's see here. Uh, question. Um, what, so, uh, I guess a lot of the questions are, you know, what kind of would be the next process with the next step in the process for you, Mike, with a script like this? Um, because again, cast or, uh, you know, attendees, we were just sharing this with you just to kind of be like, oh, this is what our writers group look like, looks like, and we'll just, you know, invite you in so you can kind of see how it goes. Um, this isn't necessarily something that GK Chesterton um, is going to produce. This was just something that was shared at our writers meeting. Um, but we just want to know, um, you know, we just want to know as a writer, like what would be your next steps that you would do with this script? Give us a look inside how that works. Uh, well, first of all, is to cast everyone here on the Zoom. So I'll have my people reach out to your reps. 
Um, that's number one. Uh, no, you know, Denise, I'm, I'm blessed in my day job. I'm an executive at a studio. So I'm learning a lot about making a movie. We're actually in production right now. So the goal is, is to use those skills from my day job to hopefully eventually produce this one day. I think it's got a couple of things going for it with like a low budget um, and not many extras, right? I think from a producerial standpoint, it's a very makeable film. So I would love that. And I think it's really important. There's not much faith-based content out there for young people. Right. You have the Kendrick brothers who are doing great things, but to have a true young adult um, script explore this. And that's such a it's just an important time for for people to be asking questions, because I think faith grows from asking questions. And that's the goal of this of this uh, script, ultimately. So would appreciate all your prayers. But yes, I would. I, this is absolutely something I'd, I'd love to champion and, and hopefully get out to the to the masses. Mike, I have a question for you on that note. Um, you know, even though it was a joke about casting everybody on the Zoom, like for, for <laughs> something like this, I mean, I think what actually, uh, what is really sort of um, uh, um, made clear and visible is like even that this, this could work beyond the high school, you know, uh, range, you know, it could work like college age or, or you know, even just, you know, Gen Z age at this point and, and almost any age really, but I mean, obviously with the certain plot points, it, it works it re works re really well in the high school genre. Have you, out of just sheer curiosity, have you ever thought about, or maybe with this reading about maybe pushing the, the age range on it or, or anything like that? I mean, does that give you any pause for like, well, you know what, maybe this might be because of, you know, the, the, the maturity that that actors usually outside of the house high school age bring to to um a piece like this especially with all the emotional levels to it is that something you'd ever consider yeah yeah you know at the end of the day the most important thing jonathan is like the 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 universal themes that come out of it and that transcends casting it, you could cast whoever whoever you wanted any any you know any race whatever i think again the most important thing is getting the message out so yeah if you know I'm I'm a I'm a uh, I've got a lot of notes in my life, so I mean I'm I'm a very collaborative person. But again, at the end of the day, it's just getting that getting the good word out, and if it you know means aging someone up or whatever it is, um, yeah, definitely something that um, is is wise to to bring up just from a, a marketing standpoint. But yeah, I just love John Hughes, like movies like that come out of his writing, um, Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns, balancing like the levity with those with those really emotional beats. Um, and I was a high school teacher at one time. So the, the high school oh. voice is very familiar. Yeah, I did one year's time as a teacher. <laughs> Thank your teachers. It's a very, uh, very difficult profession, but that's really helped me kind of embrace that um, voice. And in case you were wondering, I love Olive Garden. <laughs> that makes its way into every script. <laughs> so. I freaking love Olive Garden too, so much. So I appreciate that so much. And you hear your family. That's what the, yeah. Oh, I love it. Olive Garden. Okay. Um, and then while I say thank you to everybody, um, one last thing that I would love for you guys watching to put in the chat is just any ideas that you have. Um, because, you know, in past writers groups that, you know, we've had with Mike, I was like, well, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do this. And I was very excited to see that some of that feedback was incorporated. Very proud of myself. <laughs> I gave a good note or two. So yeah, any, um, I, we're going to save, I'm going to just download this whole chat um, and give it to Mike when we're done. So, um, so any ideas that you have, um, feel free to pop in, in the chat. Um, let's see here. Uh, for example, part of me was thinking when I was, um, uh, watching Jonathan be Father Jacobs tonight, I was like, you know, it'd be really fun to see Jonathan play is like a very crotchety Irish janitor. <laughs> I was like, what if Father Jacobs was just like, you think he's going to the priest, but instead he's going to go to the janitor's closet. And that's like who his, his, um, his spiritual director is, is this really wise curmudgeon -y um, Irish janitor or something like that. Anyway, so you never know, like if you guys Sweet. have like crazy, what do you want to give us a taste of crotchety Irish janitor right now? I feel like you could. Am I putting you too much on the spot, Jonathan? Well, I don't know if I'd be inclined to be an Irish janitor now. I might have to have an eye patch or something like that. That's what you get. <laughs> See, he, uh, James actually goes on the high seas and has a pirate that is his, that is Bob. That's, <laughs> That's actually it. 
All right. Well, cool. Um, so yeah, that is, that is everything y'all. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, again, I just want to say thank you to everybody who came here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that you had fun. We hope that you follow us on our socials. Um, again, that's GK Chesterton Entertainment on Instagram, on Facebook. We hope to do more stuff like this in the future. So stay tuned if you want to join us again. And again, we, you know, it does take us resources um, to, to put up stuff like this. So if you are willing to drop something in our tip jar, we would be so grateful. You can do that at gkce.org slash donate. Again, that's gkce.org slash donate. And if you want to just, even if it's just five bucks, that's super exciting. And um, even if it's just like, you know what, I don't, at times it said, I got nothing to donate. If you would send up a prayer for us, that would be so powerful. Um, we're just so grateful for all of your guys' support. Um, but again, if you do want to, our tip jar, you can find at gkce.org slash donate. And tell us on our Facebook, on our Instagram, what you liked, what you want to see in the future, what you want us to do. We love hearing it. Um, and stay tuned because um, we will have some announcements on what's coming next. Um, I'm too afraid to say what it is because Maria, <laughs> I want to make sure that Maria um, phrases exactly uh, what, you know, what we're doing and, and stuff like that. But that is, um, Jonathan, you got one last thing? One last thing. So for those who have asked, is this available after the fact or is this just a one-time thing? Just, just for those who have asked. Oh, um, yeah, it's been recorded. And so we're going to, it'll, it, it probably won't be up in the next few days because we're going to edit it a little bit but it will be up on our website so that you can watch um stuff like that and if you like what we did you know please check out the last days please check out 30 bc check out our lenten reflections you'll see a lot of familiar faces um in those Your productions friend. yep see a lot of see a lot of friends a lot of the gkce family um and again thank you thank you thank you thank you for your prayers please keep supporting us please keep praying for us um we are so grateful for all of you and that is it have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming. We're so, we had so much fun. Take care, everybody.